Hello and welcome to my tutorial on the relationship of secondary chord movements in four parts. Part one, the two chord. In part two, we'll be looking at the six chord, part three, the three chord, and part four, the seventh chord. I should point out if you have not viewed my tutorial on the relationship of primary chord movements, please do so. It's very important that you see them in a chronological order. They're easily accessible through my homepage on my website. Just move over to the right hand side, find the tab marked tutorials and click on that. You'll find them in there. Okay, let's take a close look now at the two chord. So where does the two chord come from? Well, it comes from the modes. We're looking at the Ionian mode, which is our major scale. Let's take a look at C major. Again, all the white notes. So the two chord is found on the second note of the scale and it is minor. If I were to look at the scale of B flat, the two chord will be C minor. If I were to look at the scale of D flat, the two chord would be E flat minor, so on and so forth. The two chord is completely interchangeable with the four chord. Wherever you use a four chord, you could probably use a two chord and vice versa. However, there is a difference between the two. Even though they are interchangeable, the mood that they make is quite different from one another. For example, here's my one chord in B flat, the two chord C minor. Let's listen to that for a second. It has a feeling of warmth, romance, perhaps melancholy, quite a bit different than its counterpart, the four chord, which is major strong and bright in quality. There's my four chord major, two chord minor. Interchangeable, yes, but they will definitely affect the type of sound you'll get out of your music. The two chord being a non-primary chord is most often used as a subdominant function. That means it sets up the five chord. The five chord usually drives us back to the tonic chord. I take a little passage, say um, in B flat, start on the two chord, five and one. If I now move that into the scale of C, the key of C, starting on the two chord, Two sets up the five and the five goes back to the one. Of course the four chord is also a subdominant function but the two going to the five happens far more often than the four going to the five. Just check all your sheet music at home you'll see how often a two chord precedes a five chord. In those two little examples one in B flat and one in C I use the triadic form. Here it is in C. I just use that but in a two chord in major most often is not played just as a triad. More often you'll find a seventh attitude. In fact, like all the other primary chords, it can be extended right out to the 13. Here you have a D minor 7, it could become a D minor 9, a D minor 11, and even up to a D minor 13 without affecting the status of the fact that it is a two chord, in this case in C wonky but if I put it in context it's fine. A two chord like the five sus can split a bar that would normally be a five chord. Let's take a, a bar of five going into one chord. Here it is in its basic form a five chord going to a one chord. That five chord can be split with a sus. Resolve the five chord and into the tonic chord. Here it is with the two chord doing the same thing. Although that's interchangeable with a sus resolving and the two chord setting up the five, you must realize that there is a totally different sound there. Here, with the sus chord you have the tension for 
versus the melancholy or the warm sound of the two chord. Not a question of one being better or worse than the other, it's a question of context and what you want the sound to be. If you viewed my tutorial on the relationship of primary chord movements, part one and two, we basically just looked at the primary chords, of course, being one, four, and five. And the five, we uh, let the little sus come in just to play around with it. We've now added the two chords. So up until now, we've only got four chords to deal with, but you'd be surprised what we can do with just those four chords with a very simple passage in music. Okay, so I'm going to just have three bars. One on a one chord, second bar on a five chord, and back to the one chord for the third bar. So let's add a little simple tune to it and just count it in. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Here's that same passage. I'm going to use a sus to interact with uh, the five chord. Five sus. Resolve. And back to the tonic chord. Same passage. This time I'm going to use a four as a subdominant function to set up the five chord. Let's listen to that. Here's that same passage again, but this time I'm going to interchange it with a two chord. Remember, two and four are interchangeable. And listen to the difference. There'll be a warmer, softer approach by using the two chord. Is it better? Is it worse? It's up to you to decide. Here I'm going to use the two chord to set up the five chord, but the five chord will come in on a sus, resolve, and then go back to the tonic. Let's listen to that. Two, five sus, resolve, back to the one. Here, here's that same passage, but instead of just using triads for my one and four, I'm going to take them out to a major nine. See how that affects the music. Same very simple passage, but listen closely. You start off on a one chord to a four. Two five eleven five thirteen. Interrupt a cadence with the four chord and plagal cadence into the one. Last thing I want to talk to you about are the movements of the four and the two chord. A four moves quite easily to a two chord. And a four moves quite easily to a one chord, as in a plagal cadence. But not too often do you find a two chord moving to a four or a two chord moving to a one. Oh, that can happen, of course, but again, if you look at your sheet music, you won't find examples of that very often. There's a reason for that, and we'll be looking at that more closely when we look at the seven chord in part four. Okay, the one exception to this is that a two will go back to one if you use a different inversion on the one chord. One, two, one, first inversion, four. Here I'm going to use the second inversion of the one chord, which will uh, set up the five chord. Same passage though. One chord, and then onto the five. Well, I hope you enjoyed my little tutorial on the two chord. I'll meet you at part two and we'll talk about the sixth chord. Until then, ciao.